Hi everyone. Haven't had a chance to do one of these videos for a while, but the opportunity presented itself today, so we'll give it a go. Uh, the chart that I thought I'd have a look at is the ASX Gold Index. Because it has some interesting principles. Now you can see that price reached its peak back here. The next bar was lower. Now we're looking at two weekly bars. You can see it's a weekly chart. Two weekly bars lower. Now the second bar in particular is of interest. See this junction here where price closed on the initial down bar and then the second bar came down. Now I don't usually keep that level in mind. It was the previous bar's close and price broke immediately below that. Now if price could get back above that level, I would consider that potentially bullish again and you might see price move higher in response. But you can see that the next bar, it, it pushed up to it but it closed back below it again. This is an important level, just a, a minor important level but it's a level to watch and know in your mind that if price was able to get back above that price could become bullish again and exceed this high. You can see that the next bar then also pushed up above this level but inevitably closed below it again. It's because there's supply coming in above this level and that supply needs to be overcome if price is to get back above it. You can see there's another level very similar to the to the last one just there. Now after price had moved below this level that we originally had marked and this bar at the time appeared like it was a breakdown bar then if price could get back above this level where this bar had closed low and then a widespread down bar closing below the last pivot um, if price could move back above that that level it may be able to become bullish again but there will be supply above here and that will make it difficult and you can see that this bar here tried for a period to go above that level but failed and, and the two up bars here or three up bars weren't even able to reach that level there was supply coming in now to mark the chart up like you would normally now you would normally mark each pivot down and you would see price regularly come up and test a level and try to overcome it and then break down again. And these are all your breakdown levels. Now here's a good example of being able to change your opinion. Initially this looked like a breakdown bar here but in hindsight it probably wasn't. I suggest that I suggest that was the breakdown bar and this was a bit of in, over enthusiasm probably by the retail side of the market. It is gold remember because if you look at it as a wave buying and selling waves prices come down it's tried to go back up now it's come down and it's effectively testing this line and it's trying to recover back above it but then it failed and this was like a little overshoot here so while initially it looked like that was the breakdown bar there I'm saying this is more likely the breakdown bar here so I wouldn't mark the low of this bar um, if you really wanted to mark it, you could perhaps mark it with a thinner line because it did play a little bit of a part here. You can see prices come back up to it here and then failed and gone back down. So price is broken down. We mark that line, price is broken down. Now here, you can see, although that is a breakdown bar, you can see spreads narrowed considerably. Volume has reduced quite a bit. Now, you can see all the other breakdown bars here and here 
and here. They've all got a much wider spread than the average. Uh, this one here has a much um, reduced spread compared to the other breakdown bars. So this was clearly shortening of the thrust lower. Um, the reduced spread and volume suggest that selling pressure wasn't as strong as it has been previously and the market was perhaps in a position where it could um, begin to consolidate and turn things around. Now it was Christmas time at this time. You've got the Christmas volumes there. Um, this is pretty good volume here for um, Christmas time. And I'm pretty sure you'll find that that was options expiry day, as that was there too. That was there, and that was there. So they're your option expiry days. So volume's always going to be a little higher then. So we'll get rid of them. Now you can see price has accelerated high here and closed above this line. That was your first sign that there was uh, an awakening in the market and things were becoming more positive. There would have been holders left behind at these levels. I'll just circle them here, here. This is a complex area here, but pretty much there. So when price come up adjacent to those levels in the future, it's gonna find things a bit more difficult. Now, a way the market negotiates its way past areas of congestion like this is what I call bullish absorption. And you can see a reasonable example of it here. I'll just draw a couple of parallel lines so that you can see there. Now, there's three things that are generally a, uh, a giveaway for bullish absorption. It's hard to know at the time. The first is a pressing nature to the upside. You can see that over one, two, three, four, five, six, seven weeks, prices really kept just pressing higher slowly. There's been a couple of little dips below it, but it's its overall nature is for the market to press higher. Now, another thing that you often see for bullish absorption is clustering of closes. You can see here three closes all clustered together and two closes clustered together there. That's often uh, something that you'll see in bullish absorption. And the third thing that you'll regularly see are uh, threatening down bars that make you feel as though the market is going to break down, but instead price reverses, uh, like this bar here in particular. Um, it looked like price was going to continue lower here. Look at this hot, long tail above, but instead you get a big strong up bar. And here you got uh, two more positive bars. Originally price did test below this bar, but it closed back above the previous close. The next bar closed higher again and then prices accelerated up. This is a good example of bullish absorption. But then we had the COVID-19 coronavirus issue start to uh, weigh upon the market. And that's caused this bar initially, people getting out. Remember there's a lot of retail holders, even in gold, and while gold may be considered defensive, there can still be a, a bit of a panic go on. Now, prices accelerated lower and look at the increase in volume, that's considerably higher. And there was a, an attempt to support the market on this bar. It was a little messy, uh, which you'll get with your retail holders because you wouldn't have expected this little uh, tail below the previous low, but there was, and then price was bought up and then a serious down bar on much heavier volume here. Now the close off the, off the low here suggests that buying did come in off the low in this period here. This next bar here is a really interesting one in the short term. Volume was even higher, but price did not close, did not trade at all below the low of the previous bar that was within the range. If that was all selling, price would have plummeted lower but it didn't. Remember it's an increase in volume. 
very high volume, easily the highest volume of, on the whole chart. And you can see that price at some point has pushed right up to here before closing back down, but still within the, the range of the previous bar. Um, this was potentially buying here. It may not have felt like it at the time, but there's little doubt that there was at least good support come in here. Now that can still be dumped. If the next week was terribly bearish again, that may all be dumped, but at that time, there was considerable buying in that bar. And the fact that the next bar was up on pretty good volume really helps to confirm the buying in this bar. Now, there is still supply around, the close mid bar, uh, the long, long tail above, tells you there's still supply around. And I imagine that the news is still quite bad, but the fact that price hasn't broken down um, really does help to confirm that good buying has come in. Now, the next bar, you can see spreads narrowed considerably. Volume has reduced quite a bit. So the selling pressure is starting to come off and there was probably some testing in the bottom of this bar and a little bit of over exuberance earlier in the market, earlier in the week perhaps, but uh, price is still closed mid bar. You've got two closes adjacent, almost a level with each other. And then if price can get above that level and particularly also above that previous bar's high, you'd have to be starting to think that things are becoming bullish. Now, you can see on the next bar, that volume has really dropped considerably now. Um, it's well below average and even below a normal average line. Yet price, in response, has pushed higher and closed above the previous bar's high. Now, this is probably suggesting that there's very little selling pressure in the market and on reduced volume, price was able to push higher because there was just no sellers. The sellers who were going to sell at this level had probably already done so and they were out of the market and price rose easily on low volume. And you can see price again has pushed higher in response, this time on a good increase in volume. This is buying and you probably find that there's some um, supply coming out of this congestion here. You can see if you drew an arrow, you can see there's probably supply coming out of this uh, congestion where there was bullish absorption going on before we had the real COVID-19 issues really start to hit the market. And um, if you drew a line across from the highs there, you can see how price has had to spend some time consolidating and absorbing that supply in here. And you can see that this week, price is making a pretty good effort to break out above that level. And you can also see how volume is now reducing at this level. So supply is being absorbed in here and that's probably allowing this bar to break out above the previous highs. Okay, thanks for your time and I'll see you next time. See ya.